Hello, let's look at 1983 Mechanics 3, so M3. Um, so here we have this nice diagram of this disc, uniform solid cylinder, um, and it's, it has a, it's a pulley, right? So it's attached to a rope, and then we have this block that's going to be pulling it down, okay? Um, so it says, a uniform sol solid cylinder of mass M1 and radius capital R is mounted on a frictionless bearing uh, about a fixed axis through point O. The moment of inertia of the cylinder about the axis is I equals one half M1 R squared. A block of mass M2 suspended by a cord wrapped around, around the cylinder as shown above is released at time T equals zero. On the diagram below, draw and identify all the forces acting on the cylinder and on the block. So this is just our free body diagram. Okay. So I have my uh, disc. Okay. Um, and I have my block. I'm going to start with the block because that one's a little bit easier. Um, so what force will I have directed straight down? Good. So that will be mg. You could also do fg. Um, you should not do just g, right? So you don't want to do just g um, because it is not just 9.81. It's dependent on the mass as well. So fg or um, mg is a much better way to answer. And then what is the force that is up? Remember, that's the force of the string, that string pulling it up, and that is labeled uh, tension. So you could do a T, you could also do an F, T, either one of those would be perfect. Okay, um, so that's all we have there. Then for the pulley, okay, um, we have some different forces. Uh, so the first one, just looking at the diagram, uh, what do you think we have there? We end up having three forces. Um, but the first one is tension, or as we said earlier, FT. Okay. Um, now, in this scenario, these two numbers and this one are going to be equal. Okay. Um, if you had something like this, where this has mass, this has mass, and this has mass, um, let's just make this a bigger mass, so 2m. Um, then these T's will not equal, T1 will not equal T2 if the pulley has mass, okay? But in this case, uh, there is no tension coming off the other end, so I don't really need to worry about that, okay? Um, so we can go ahead and erase that. Um, but I have this T, and then I also have two other forces. So the first one is the pulley has a weight, so it has to have an Mg. Um, specifically, that would be M1, and then we can also add M2 over here. Okay, um, and then obviously I have two forces down. I need something to counterbalance it, so I must have some kind of force up. Uh, support. Okay, the reason this is not a normal force is because it's not sitting on a surface, right? Because it's not sitting on a surface, uh, it's not a normal force. Um, to one other thing to note is that this force should actually be longer than these two forces, right? Because these two down forces, right, this one and this one, need to add up to give us this up force, okay? Um, so if you can draw that so that it kind of adds up a little bit visually, that is a good thing. Um, this is just a support force. That's just the beam that's holding my pulley up, okay? Um, you could label it something else, um, and it, that should be fine as long as it's something that, you know, makes sense. Um, you wouldn't want to label it a tension or a normal force or something that we already have defined, um, just as some sort of force that's supporting it. Okay? Let's go ahead and look at part B. Okay, part B. So it says in terms of M1, M2, R, and G, determine the following the acceleration of the block. All right. Okay, so I need to find the acceleration of the block. Well, Normally, if you ask for acceleration, what do you want? What are you going to do to solve for acceleration? Hopefully, you go back to your physics toolkit and say, acceleration, that would be forces. Okay, so let's set up an Fnet equals ma. Now, I only have one object for which an Fnet makes sense, right? Um, because only one of these objects is moving linearly. One object is moving angularly, is rotating. Um, but only one object is moving linearly. So I have F net, and I'm going to go back to my free body diagram. Okay, so I have T up, MG down. Remember, I want to have the direction of acceleration as positive. OK, 
Okay, so that means I have m2g minus t equals m2a. Okay, and so I have that. But you'll notice that t is an unknown and a is an unknown. So I have two unknowns and I have one equation. Okay, which means I need another equation. Okay, so I already set up my f net. And I have another object that's moving, but it's not moving linearly, it's moving angularly, right? It's rotating. So what do you set up for that? I want to set up a torque net. So I got torque net equals I alpha, okay? And so torque net, I need to plug in my torque, right? And so if we look at this, this mg here, what's its radius? Since the pivot point is that middle point, what will the radius be there? That radius is just going to be equal to zero. So the torque is going to be equal to zero as well, right? And then same thing for the support, right? The radius equals zero for that support, which means my torque must also equal zero, okay? Um, so neither of those are going to provide a torque. And in fact, the only thing that's going to make a torque is this tension here, okay? So I'm going to have uh, RFT equals I alpha, okay? And Remember, I need to use a capital R for these R's. So I'll go ahead and change that cap, lowercase r to a capital R. So I have R, F, T equals I. I need to plug in I. And it says right here that I is 1 half M1 R squared. So I'll plug in 1 half M1 R squared. And I don't want alpha because it asks about A. So I need to change that alpha into an A. So that is just A over capital R. You notice this cancels and then this cancels. Okay, so R's cancel. Um, that's actually a very normal thing. Um, so honestly, if you're doing something with forces and rotation, expect the uh, radius to cancel out. Okay, um, so that's just something you can generally that generally happens. So I have F T equals one half m one a. Okay, now I have a nice little equation here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and plug that in for my uh, force of tension over here. Okay, so I have m2g minus one half m1a equals m2a. Okay, um, so now I just need to solve for a, so I will add that one half m1a to the other side. So I have m2g equals one half m1a plus m2a, and then I'm going to factor out the a. So I'll have a one half m1 plus m2 equals m2g and then just divide okay and so I'll have a equals um, m2g over one half m1 plus m2 okay and then just to make it look a little prettier this doesn't change the answer I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2 okay and so I'll have a equals 2m2g over uh, m1 plus 2m2, okay? So that one half cancels out that. Um, and so either one of these uh, is, a, is an okay answer, right? That, that's an, a fine answer, and this is also a fine answer. Um, just uh, if you look at the answer C, you'll, key, you'll see that bottom answer instead of the top answer, okay? Um, so that was I, and then we're going to continue with I, I right here, okay? So now I want to know what the force of the tension is, okay? Um, since that's what II says, tension in the cord. So, 1 half M1A, but now I can actually go ahead and plug in this A that I found, okay? Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug that in here, okay? And so I have the force of tension equals 1 half M1 times 2 M2G over M1 plus 2m2, okay? And so this ft, this half cancels with this 2 here, and so I'll have m1 m2g over m1 plus 2m2, okay? And so that would be my final answer, okay? Um, this one hopefully wasn't too bad. It's a little bit shorter than some of the other questions. Um, but it's a great review of how to use both torque and forces. Okay, thanks so much for watching.